Hi, Sheba here. Today we're going to talk about a drugstore diva by the name of Halston. And she has been around since 1975. She was created by the designer Halston. And um, at the height of the disco era, the freewheeling 70s. And this fragrance is very much part of the 70s for sure, the composition of it. The bottle is uh, uniquely shaped. It has always been this shape. Uh, there was quite a lot of um, disagreement by the manufacturers because it was such a strange shape that they didn't want to mass produce it. And uh, Halston stuck to his guns. He wanted this shape and it's always been that way. And uh, I'm going to talk about the origins of the fragrance and uh, a few other stories. So here we go. It's a Shipra floral or Shipre, which means it's a green based uh, fragrance with floral notes added. Um, let's see. Top notes are mint, melon, green leaves, peach, and bergamot. It's a very sharp, excuse me, sharp opening. And uh, it, it's not something that is a modern fragrance because of this blend of uh, ingredients. It's very retro. So if you've never smelled this before, it's going to be so different. The middle note is carnation, orris root, jasmine, marigold, ylang ylang, cedar, and rose. And in the base is sandalwood, amber, patchouli, musk, oak moss, vetiver, and incense. This is a very, very decadent type of fragrance. Um, the stories that I was going to tell about it involve a uh, funeral. I, that story is I had put some of this on and I didn't know, I went to visit my mother and I didn't know I was going to have to go to a funeral. And I said to my mother and my brother, I said, I cannot wear Halston to a funeral. This is far too provocative of a fragrance to wear to a funeral home. So they said, well, too bad. So it did have quite an effect um, on the men that were there. Uh, and it's not the kind of effect that you want at a funeral home. But I did get hijacked to this uh, sad occurrence, so I did have to go. I, if I had known, I wouldn't have worn it. Um, it's it's very excessive in, in a green um, type of way. So a lot of people are, are not going to be wildly interested in it because of the oak moss in the base and the incense and the sandalwood, it can be very, very heavy. And um, let's talk about um, the different versions of this. As you can see, this bottle has no writing on it. That means that this bottle is a more recent formulation. It retains some of the beauty of the original fragrance, but it is a much more watered down version. If you see a version that has the name written on it like this little bottle this is this is even more watered down so the most you're going to be able to find unless you can find a vintage bottle which is very rare is a bottle with no writing this was from overstock.com this is the closest that you're going to get to the original some purists can't tolerate anything but the original this is an oil spray this is the most watered down i shouldn't say watered down because it's oil it's um it has the least of the original fragrance in it. I don't mind it. There are people that hate this, just hate it. And I believe there's another version that came out more recently that's a more floral one, but I haven't seen it anywhere. Um, let me see what I wrote about this. Um, yeah, so it's all about decadence. It's from the me decade, the 70s. Disco, Studio 54, it's extremely distracting. Men like this a lot. I don't know. It's an acquired taste because now we're used to smelling bakery and sugar and sweets and and those types of fragrances, uh, gourmand, let's call them. And this is this is not that. This is v from a very different time. Um, so what you um, 
the other oh that's the other thing i actually wore this um the oil to jury duty and that would be this bottle because I thought it would work on jury duty because it's distracting enough to keep your mind really sharp because the opening is so sharp with the mint and the melon and the green leaves and it really does keep your attention which leads me to another story of uh, a lady who did write her a very brief review on another website and she said she um, she visited she was an exotic dancer and um, she visited a club where all of the ladies who work there only wore Halston and the owner provided this fragrance for them. It's very distracting, but at the same time, it, it's very focused. It distracts the, the person um, who is taking it in, and then they focus right on you when you have this on. But it is strictly an acquired... Um, taste it's not something that's modern in any way I happen to love it so don't wear it to funerals I would wear it out if you are with um, a group of people because this is about getting out there having fun that's what the 70s was about it was about you know being out there think of um, in the early 80s too. think of Scarface Michelle Pfeiffer in the white um, halter dress you know, painting bright red fingernails, you know she was wearing Halston because this is, this is fun. This is go out and party and have a good time. So if you're interested, look for a bottle that has no writing on it. You, you can find these in Marshalls quite often, uh, even at drug stores. But if, but realize if you do see a bottle with the writing on it, it's going to be much more harsh the blending is just not going to be there. And this is the best blending you're going to get in this day and age, unless you can get a vintage version of this. But uh, I love this. I absolutely love it. Um, I've always loved fragrances with oak moss. And oak moss isn't added um, the way it used to be because it's an allergen. So they are coming up with synthetic versions of it. So it's really, if you can get your hands on grandma's vintage of this when she was partying back in the day, you, you're in for a treat. So uh, thank you for watching my review of Halston. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.